Welcome to a new tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to assemble an instrument using samples. Um, first I'm going to explain you how to load them. There are a few methods. Then I'm going to explain you how to assign them to key mappings. And then I'm going to explain you something about the sample properties. Let's first start by simply loading a few samples. We select here an instrument slot and then double click on sample file name and then it instantly loads. As soon as the file has been loaded, you can directly play it using either your PC keyboard or just clicking the virtual keyboard or if you have an external synthesizer keyboard through MIDI, then you can also use that. Um, simply select another instrument slot to have a new sample loaded up for that particular instrument. It always occupies the first sample slot right here and it also always takes care that the first sample slot will have the file name and the instrument name will also automatically carry this name. There is also uh, a very quick method to add samples to this sample list. You can just click and drag these files right into the instrument list then they are loaded. If you want to have an instrument and let it contain more samples this is possible as well. Just keep this instrument selected, press the plus here to add a few empty sample slots, then select the sample slot, double click another sample. Do this for each sample slot. Also you can just drag into the sample table if you desire on any spot you wish. Multiple selections is possible as well. Click the first sample you want to load, hit the left shift key, keep it pressed, then click the last sample you want to load and then click the selection, drag and drop. You don't need to have the shift key pressed if you do this, though it doesn't really matter, it works both. Or if you want to have uh, a selective array, keep the control or command key pressed and then select or deselect sample depending on whether they are selected or not. Drag and drop again. Let's explain how to map all these samples to the keyboard. Because if you load more samples into the same instrument, you of course want to play them. To play the other samples than only sample slot 0, you have to assign them by clicking the sample slot and then clicking the key you want to assign them to or the keys. You can always assign uh, samples to multiple keys than only one. That's, that's possible. If you have assigned them to uh, a specific bass key, take care that the bass note is being adjusted as well. So this sample is being assigned to a C major uh, you have to make this a C major as well, so that the sample will be played at its original rate on this key. So this is the bass key and from here on the sample will be played at a lower frequency and from here on the sample will be played at a higher frequency if this sample would be applied to other keys right here on this virtual mapping side. We do the same with sample 2 assign it to a D4, sample 3 assigning to a D major and assigning, let's just double click and then enter the note right here, it's just as easy why doing the hard way when we can do it the easy way, oh that's one octave too high and then if we play them on the keyboard, watch the keys right here This is how they are mapped to the virtual keyboard. If you have percussion samples, the most easiest way is to press the generate drum kit. One note though, you can see here some custom mapped samples. If I press the generate drum kit, watch what happens. They disappear. So the currently existing key mapping is being erased prior to reassigning all these samples right here. But if you do generate the drum kit, all these samples are automatically assigned to all these keys right here. And the bass note 
is being automatically adjusted to the sample slot and the assigned key right here. If we go to the sample properties, we see here the base node as well as here. And if I click on these samples right here, they are related. If we go to the NNA, NNA stands for new node action. And this uh, option takes care that something is being done when a new note is played here in a column while another note is still playing. Uh, this is an option coming from the old tracker world because the old tracker worlds, the default behavior was to cut off. Let me just simply demonstrate this to you. Uh, let's take a bottle. Let's listen how it sounds. Well, this is pretty old behavior. This has been since uh, the first day of Sound Tracker. Uh, a note is being played, and when a new note is being instantiated on the track right here, the previous note is instantly being cut off. With the n new note action, we can just decide what the Renoir should do when the next note is being initialized. If I tell a Renoise to continue, it will sound like this. And if I tell it to perform an note off, it will sound like this. Well, it does not sound that much different from a note cut. Let's go to the instrument editor and make it a little bit more obvious what the note off does. I now have enabled a sustain note right here and I have enabled the volume envelope. And if I just press the control button, the right control button, you can see that it plays the sample up to this point. And as soon as the instrument receives a note off, either by this event or by a real note off in the pattern editor, it will continue to play the rest of the envelope right here. Once more for the whole picture, note cut. Note off. Note continue. Okay. This is the sample editor. Here you have the start loop note and here you have the end loop note. And they only appear because this one is enabled. And it's set to forward. Or you can set it to reverse. Or you can set it to ping pong. Pretty obvious. The interpolation mode is a sort of bit correction or, or oversampling, call it how you like. You have three modes, you can either turn it off or select a linear uh, interpolation or cubic interpolation. The base note I've explained, fine tuning. Um, this is just to fine tune uh, one hertz or two hertz, at least ranges that does not contain changes of whole semitones. And for the sync option, I have to load a percussion loop for that. Let's load this percussion loop right here. And let's just insert this percussion into this pattern and listen to it. Well, it approximately ends up on uh, row 40 or 41. But suppose I want to have it at uh, row 64. I enter row 64 right here. Let's listen. In the same way that I made Renoise expand this sample, I can also make it shrink it by just enter 32 right here. Let's listen again. It does not matter what note you pick, it always will play the sample at that frequency rate to fill the sample for the amount of lines that you have filled in right here. So you can either pick the C6, D5, it will always keep playing the sample as long as you have the sync checkbox checked. Amplification, very clear, uh, lower or um, raise the volume of the current sample and the panning is also very clear. Pan the sample to the left or to the right. Okay. This was a quick tutorial for creating an instrument using samples. I hope you enjoyed it and until the next tutorial.
Bye.